Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie and the Walking Dead finale totally delivered on the WTF and left things on this cliffhanger that really demands that we bookmark season 5 episode 1 in our calendars, which is like 7 months away. Even though we got most of the things that we thought we were going to get, there were still a few surprises and things that they held back on, as well as a few surprise cameos that were really awesome. So before we dive into the WTF, quick shout out for the giveaway. Because I hit 150,000 subscribers just as the episode was starting, I'm so happy and you guys have been so awesome. I'm upping it to three gift cards that I'm giving away. All you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment below. But I'll be announcing who those winners are in the Q&A video tomorrow. And I'll also be posting a Season 5 Predictions video. So, let's just go ahead and wade right into the blood, but what I'm going to do is my top 5 WTF moments and then do a post-mortem review on the entire season, you know, as well as this episode. Here we go. Number 5, Herschel Flashbacks. If you had trouble pinpointing whenever these scenes were happening, it was basically in the time between the Season 3 finale and the start of Season 4, about two months after Woodbury. I love the Herschel and Patrick cameos. May they rest in pieces. The bigger theme of the episode was who am I? And Chandler Riggs, you know, as Carl even said, who are we? I really felt like they were trying to foreshadow Rick's line from the comics when he says, we are the walking dead, but it never came. Maybe they'll drop that next season whenever the second half of the cliffhanger picks up. Who else laughed though whenever Rick walked up to Patrick playing with the Legos and he just made that face and then went over to Carl who was just cleaning his gun like a pro. Chandler Riggs has actually grown quite a bit since season three, so he actually looked way different. I'd bet that they waited till recently to shoot these scenes rather than shoot them at the beginning of the season. And did anyone else feel like it was almost Herschel's fault that Rick became this ineffectual farmer Rick? You know, the one that Carl got so mad at for not being the badass he was in this episode. It was noble, I totally don't blame Herschel or anything, but you could see how much he was trying to convince him to start living like a pacifist. You know, unless like a monster that Michonne and Carl kind of thought that they were turning into, or that Michonne thought she was. And on to number four, I'm just a monster too. Carl and Michonne's talk was so brutal, especially when Michonne explained the rest of her origin story with her son Andre and Mike and Terry. It was really hard to tell whether she turned them into pets to punish them or to punish herself for not being there to save them, but I really think she was just punishing herself. It was also really nice that she acknowledged the mechanics of using those pets to camouflage herself. Maybe they'll use that again in the future. Carl was just explaining his existential crisis and how it was the source of tension between him and Rick. He's really just upset with himself for thinking he's a monster as opposed to the Lego fanboy that he thinks that Rick wants him to be. You could almost say that about any of the characters in the episode, you know, especially Daryl, Rick, Michonne, and Carl. You know, are you a monster or are you a Lego fanboy slash fangirl? Feel free to let me know which one you are in the comments below. And number three, welcome to Terminus. There are times when characters do crazy stupid things and there are times when you just feel so proud for how careful they're being, or how smart. I can honestly say I was proud of Rick for this entire episode. You can clearly tell that he has learned from past events and isn't going to trust anyone ever again. You know, thus backdoor entry. I feel like that idea, you know, you can't trust anyone was just hammered home whenever they passed through that creepy shrine and it said never again, never trust up on the wall. As much as Terminus has been a mystery the second half of this season, I feel like we all kind of agree that those are not good people. Even when we finally met Gareth, he was just way too disarming. Cut to literally disarming. But we have to say it, he's totally not the governor. Scott Gimple and Robert Kirkman made a big point of saying that there would be no Negan or other big bad like him for a long time. They just needed a lot of space between two mega villains. I just can't say it enough though, Rick was on his shit in this episode. No bullshit. Eyes of the Hawk. Where did you get that watch? Cut to number two, reunion in Trankar A. The biggest surprise here was that everyone was still okay with all their limbs attached. Big asterisk though, where the F is Beth? For now we can just say that everyone is still in the condition that they entered in. Let me know if you disagree, but we can all just say what we're thinking here. Cannibals. I actually cheered really loud whenever Rick slapped that plate out of Carl's hands. Do not eat the people meats. You just can't come back from that. It's not like this is an episode of Hannibal. We won't get confirmation though till season 5, but I'm expecting them to tie everything up in that first episode, fingers crossed, which is only 7 months away. No big deal. We can all just write Terminus fanfiction until then. But please, no creepy cannibal sex stuff, which actually leads me to my number one WTF moment. Joe's group is totally the marauders from the comics. It went down almost exactly how we expected. If you're not familiar with the comics, in issue 57, the Marauders were just a couple of people that sexually assaulted Carl and just tried to kill them. 
Rick ended up biting a giant chunk out of one of their necks and brutally revenge killed the one that assaulted Carl. The difference was is that it was Michonne holding Carl in the show and it was Abraham in the comic, but that shot was exactly the same as it was in the comic. Even though I totally expected this to happen, it was still so hard to watch. I had to look away just a little bit, but I did like how they kind of jumped around in time. Like they showed us that end moment first and then jumped back to the beginning. Did anyone else think that it was strange that Rick seemed so phased in that moment we saw him first, you know, right after the opening teaser? And then when Daryl sat down, he just seemed totally fine. Redbeard full of blood. I actually wanted to start calling him Redbeard, like he was almost a different character at that point. After that, he felt so much more action-oriented and driven than he has all season long. He actually said the same thing that Tyrese said to Carol after the whole Lizzie WTF episode. We do what we do because of them, to keep them safe. Whenever Rick said it, he was talking about Carl specifically, and Tyrese was just talking about Judith. So now it's your turn. Let me know, what was your biggest WTF moment? Was it the Marauders, or was it that cliffhanger? Like I said, I will be doing the Q&A video tomorrow as well as Season 5 predictions, so we can talk all about Beth, all about Terminus Cannibals, all about baby Judith, Carol, and Tyrese, so we can cover everything. But here's my quick post-mortem on Season 4, as well as my review of this episode. Just let me stop my hands from shaking just a little bit. Overall, I do give the finale an A, just for character development. Of course, I was disappointed that they left so many big questions unanswered, like, where's Beth? When are they going to reveal all the cannibalism? And who's gonna die next? But that's what a really good series does. You know, it demands that you continue watching. So I will give them props for ending it on such a high moment. The thing that stuck out most was Rick, obviously. Not just because of that WTF moment with the Marauders, but because he's either reset to that person right at the beginning of those flashbacks, before he became Farmer Rick, or he's more of a monster than ever. So far, he still seems like he has a firm grip on reality, and I was really satisfied with the way he handled the Terminus situation. There really is nothing they could have done about that. It looked like they had almost 50 people with rifles pointed at them. I mean, a leader, an archer, a samurai, and a kid can only kill so many people at once. Was anyone else bummed though that Gareth didn't give Carl a cool nickname? I felt kind of sad. That last moment with Rick is a really good preview for what the survivors' characters are going to be like during Season 5. No more bullshit, no more farming, just straight up ass kicking. I know a lot of you guys actually commented on how weak you thought this season was after all that crazy action during Season 3, but I mean how do you top a Walker Head Aquarium? You just can't do that. That's why I feel like Season 4 had to be this story where all the characters realized that they can't go back to being normal people, you know, never again. They come first. It sets the survivors up in this really nice dichotomy with the creepy Terminus cult. So now, let me know what your final thoughts are on the season and what your biggest questions are going into Season 5. Like I said, I'll be doing Season 5 predictions and the Q&A tomorrow. I'll have the winners of the giveaway in the Q&A video, but right now you can click here to get that. I'll add the annotation as soon as I post it, and you can click here to watch all my other Season 4 videos in case you need to rewind just a little bit. Need more WTF moments. Thank you so much for watching. This has been a ton of fun. I look forward to doing a ton of Season 5 videos. High fives. See you guys tomorrow.